Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Charlene Gamaldo. I'm a Johns Hopkins uh, Neurology Sleep Faculty Member, and I'm the Medical Director of the Howard County Sleep Disorder Center. As we go through life, we actually, the, per, the percentage or proportion of the time we spend in the different stages of sleep do actually change as we, as we age. Um, when we are first born, folks are pretty familiar with what's called REM sleep, or what we believe to be dream sleep, and non-REM sleep. And when we're first born, we spend half of our time in dream sleep, or REM sleep, and non-REM sleep. As we get older, we eventually shave down that proportion of time to spending about 25% of our time in REM sleep or dream sleep and 75% of our time in non-REM sleep. And as we get older, the, the proportion of time that we spend in the lighter stages of sleep to the deeper stages of sleep also changes. So as we get older, we also notice that we spend more of our time in the lighter stages of sleep than we spend in the deeper stages of sleep. So it is not our imagination that we feel as we get older that we seem to, we are more attuned to our environment. We feel that we uh, can hear things and wake up more lightly. And it's true physiologically that that's what's going on with our sleep. So we should not be uh, overly concerned with, with noticing that change. What we should be concerned about is if we notice as we age, if this is causing undue problems with how we function during the day, then perhaps that may be related to another superimposed sleep disorder. Insomnia uh, is a very common disorder that uh, women are particularly prone to. This can be seen actually across um, the spectrum, pre, peri, and postmenopausal. It's particularly a problem um, during menopause for obvious reasons because um, women will often wake up in the middle of the night if they're having issues um, based on hormonal instability with hot flashes, that sort of thing. And usually that may be the reason that they'll come to see the doctor in the first place is because their menopausal um, symptoms are affecting their sleep. <music> Average adult needs about seven and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep per night. However, that's an average. Some people need more, some people need less. But whatever you need <laughs> at 22 remains pretty much fixed for the rest of your life. So the important thing to know is to be attuned to your body and, and really try not to rob yourself of what your sleep need is for the rest of your life. First and foremost is to learn and know your body, okay? So the big thing that people need to figure out is how much sleep does their body need? And the best way to do that is to do a test is A, give yourself a vacation. You owe yourself a vacation. <laughs> and then on that vacation, go to sleep and see how long you can sleep in and wake up without the aid of an alarm clock. And, the, and after about a week, you can figure out how much sleep your body actually requires and can wake up and function at its best without a need to nap and without an alarm clock. And that tells you how much sleep your body needs. And that's what you should strive for, whether you're on vacation or not, for, for the rest of your life. So that's first and foremost what you should do. The second thing you should do is you actually should have a sleep routine. Your body really goes through a process for preparing to go to sleep. So there is a hormone called melatonin that is released in your brain that actually sets the body in motion to prepare to go to sleep. And melatonin is not released at, for instance, 11 o'clock when your body says, okay, I'm going to go to sleep right now. It actually is released four hours before bedtime. It's usually released around 7 o'clock. And that is really very symbolic of the fact that your body actually goes through a process of decompressing to prepare to go to sleep. And you really should do the same thing from a behavioral standpoint. So it's really not a good idea to say, I'm going to bed at 11.30, but from 11.15 to 11.30, I'm going to you know, get on my iPad, I'm going to be on the computer, I'm going to do all these things, because that's really counterproductive to your body going through the process 
of trying to prepare to go to sleep. So those are really very simple things. Another very simple thing is caffeine. You want to stay away from that close to bedtime. Again, that is counterproductive to going through the process of preparing to go to sleep. So sleep should be a relaxing process, minimize light, minimize any stimulating activity, any stimulating material, whether it's TV, caffeine, that sort of thing, at least about an hour to two hours before going to bed. Thank you.